police officer fatalities or how to control a populace using lies and force. Despite the propaganda used to excuse their violence that you've likely been inundated with since birth, the job of a police officer in America, even when taking into account the gun problem, is not even close to being dangerous. Even according to the most generous group compiling statistics on the matter, police involved uh, violence, the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, as of December 27, 2019, only 128 federal, state, and pol uh, local police officers died in the line of duty. But hold on there, Sparky. We're not done yet. 43 of those 128 were traffic-related fatalities where the officer was outside their patrol vehicle and struck by another vehicle while engaging in activity on the roadside. Not intentional homicide, but vehicular accident. So, after some basic arithmetic, that leaves us with 85 officer fatalities in, 200, uh, in 2019. But wait! But wait! There's more. Next, we need to subtract the 19 officers who died from job-related illnesses, leaving 66 officers, uh, officer fatalities in 2019. Now, if you, thought you, if you thought we were done, think again. Take those remaining 66 and subtract the 12 that died from 9-11 attack-related illnesses, and you end up with 54 police officer deaths. But wait, don't forget the one officer who died due to fire while on duty and the one who died while on vacation in Hawaii and you're down to 52 officer fatalities in 2019. 52. Now we can talk about, viol about the violence aggression-based fatalities police face while on duty. That would work out to be 49 from firearm-related deaths, two from beatings, and one from strangulation. 52 deaths. Let's use the very loose total police presence in America provided by the exact same group. Remember, the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, if anyone was going to be generous about these statistics, it would be them. Let's use the very loose total police presence in America of, quote, over 900,000 and just round it down to an even 900,000. That works out to roughly 0.0058% of the current police officers employed were violently killed in 2019. You know who has a more dangerous job? Just about everyone. Seriously. Here's some interesting job statistics for other professions. Granted, some of these numbers are for 2018 to 2019 as the numbers provided by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics at the point of writing this essay had not yet, had yet been released for the numbers of jobs related injuries and fatalities in 2019, but they don't waver very much from year to year. So you can safely extrapolate from the 2018 numbers. These numbers were compiled by Advisor Smith and Insurance and Analysis Group. Loggers, injuries per 100,000, 109.3. Fishers, 74.2 per 100,000. Sailors and oilers, 55.1. Pilots and flight engineers, 50.4. Paving and surface operators, 46.7. Dredging and excavating, 42.4. Derrick rotary drill and service unit operators, 40.1. Uh, 40 Other transportation workers, 39.2. Roofers, 39. Maintenance workers, machinery workers, 37.4. Woodworkers, 35.9. Septic tank surfacers, 34.3. Refuse and recyclable collectors, 31.9. Iron steel workers, 28. Drive, truck drivers and drivers in general, 26. Farmers and ranchers, 25.6 per 100,000. Rail track layers and maintainers, 25.4. Reinforcing iron and rebar workers, 25. Riggers, 24.4. First line supervisors of farming, fishing, and, uh, fishing and forestry workers, 23.1. You'll notice right away that police officers aren't making an appearance on this list is they're not in the top 20 most dangerous professions in America, though they'd have you believe otherwise. The truth of the matter is, is that police do not face much violence or danger at all in their jobs. It's through blatant lies such as this that they've invaded our local communities and terrorize our people with literal military-grade equipment that they gained access to via the 1033 federal program. Now we have poorly trained link on article, poorly educated, link on article, low IQ, link on article, scared out of their mind, link on article, terrorists, link on article, roaming our streets armed with AR-15s, AR-15, uh, yeah, AR-15s, MRAPs, and head-to-toe black uniforms looking like any bad guy out of a Hollywood movie. The rise of the warrior cop has occurred in direct response to this nonsensical horseshit they con continually spew. In fact, it's getting safer to be a cop in America, as from 2018 to 2019, they had a decrease in fatalities and injuries across the board, yet still advocate for 
greater armaments, immunities, and access to our everyday lives. Of course, this is pre-COVID because their unwillingness to wear masks, wash their own hands, or get a fucking COVID vac- uh, vaccination has led to a steep increase in the fatalities associated with being a police officer. But that one's their own doing. So why is this important? Because if we're ever to fix anything in this country, some public protesting and resistance is going to be necessary. You ever notice who are the first people to respond to an even perfectly uh, peaceful protest are? Yep, police, Link included. If the protest is anyway a a threat to the status quo, read effective, then they're going to kettle, Link included, pepper spray, Link included, bing, a beat, Link included, shoot, Link included, and even drop C4 Tovex TR2 bombs, Link included, destroying entire neighborhoods, Link included, until the status quo is maintained. To improve anything truly in our society begins with radical police reform. 